This is the second part of the lecture for Module 9, What is Life? In the first part of the lecture, we talked about the first criterion that defines life, and that was that all life forms contain deoxyribonucleic acid, which is DNA. Now we're going to go to the second criterion that defines life. All life forms have a method by which they extract energy from the surroundings and convert it into energy that sustains. What this criterion is saying is that all living organisms have to eat in some way. We eat food, but plants produce their own food, so they don't eat in the same way. But they still extract or take energy from the surroundings and convert it into energy that sustains them. They produce their food through a process called photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to combine. The definition for photosynthesis is the process by which green plants and some other organisms use the energy of sunlight and simple chemicals to produce their own food. Let's look now at how the, photo, how the process of photosynthesis works. Photosynthesis requires three things to work. Three things that have to be input into the process of photosynthesis. First, it requires sunlight. It also requires carbon dioxide, which we also call CO2. The third thing that photosynthesis needs to, to work is water or H2O. If these three things are present and they go through the process of photosynthesis, then two things will be output. The first of those outputs is oxygen. The other is a chemical called glucose. In order to show that glucose really is an output of photosynthesis, we're going to do experiment 9.2. You need to find this lab report. You also need to have a pen or a pencil, and you need to have some colored pencils to do your drawings. Glucose that is produced by photosynthesis is stored in plants as starch. You've probably heard of starch before. Starch has an interesting quality in that it is turned a dark blue when a chemical iodine comes in contact with it. So let's get started with experiment 9.2. Now, as a review, do you remember what do we call the part of an experiment to which all others will be compared? We call that the control of the experiment. Well, in this experiment, we're going to modify it somewhat from the book, and we're going to have two controls. The first, which we'll call item 1, is an item containing starch. So on your uh, lab report for item number 1, you're going to write that that item is bread. So the first item that's our control is bread, and I think we all know that bread contains starch. So we'll see how the iodine reacts with that starch. The second item that's going to be a control in this experiment will be an item that we know does not contain starch. And I've chosen cheese for that. So you should write on the line for item number two that it's going to be cheese. So I took a piece of bread and I dropped a few drops of iodine on it. And you can see that it turned a very, very dark blue. And that is because bread contains starch, and iodine turns starch that dark blue color. Now, this you need to pause the video right here and draw a picture of this slide on your lab report. The second item is our cheese. Cheese does not contain starch. And you'll see from this picture that we don't have the dark blue color. Now, yeah, it is a little bit brown. It's stained where you can see that I had put the iodine, but it's not anything like the dark, dark blue that we saw on the bread. So those are our two examples of what it's going to look like if there is starch and if there isn't starch. 
You need to pause the video right here and draw a picture of this slide on your lab report. Okay, so now we have our controls and we know what the starch is going to look or what it'll look like if an item has starch and what it'll look like if an item doesn't have starch. So now we're going to test two items. The first one will be item number three, a potato. Then, kind of the purpose of this whole thing is item number four. We're going to test that, a leaf of a house plant. We're going to test it and see if it contains starch. Well, here's the picture of the potato. And as you can tell, the iodine on there turned it a very dark blue color. So that tells us that just like the bread, potatoes contain starch. You probably already knew that, but now we've tested it. You need to pause the video right here and draw a picture of this slide on your lab report. The next picture is what we really wanted to see. This leaf has turned that same dark blue color that was in the bread and the potato. So this shows us that this house plant, this leaf from the house plant, also contains starch. That starch is a result of the glucose that's being stored by the plant, and that glucose came from photosynthesis. You need to pause the video right here and draw a picture of this slide on your lab report. So I want to state it one more time that the purpose of this experiment was to show that plants have starch in them. That starch is the stored glucose and that is their stored food. Once an organism has its food, then it does the second part of criterion number two which says it has to convert that to energy. It does that conversion by a process called metabolism. Metabolism is the sum total of all the processes in an organism that convert energy and matter from outside sources and use that energy and matter to sustain the organism's func life functions. So just like we looked at the process of photosynthesis, let's take a closer look at this process of metabolism. Metabolism requires two inputs. In order for metabolism to occur, you have to have some source of food, which could be like a starch, and you also have to have oxygen. When these two things are input into the process of metabolism, there are three outputs. First of all, you get some energy out of it. Also, you get a byproduct of carbon dioxide, and another output is water. You probably already know that most living things need oxygen to survive. If you don't get your oxygen, that could be deadly. But this slide helps us to understand why that's necessary. We need this oxygen because it is used to convert our food into energy. So let's take a look at how these two processes work together. The process of photosynthesis with its three inputs and two outputs and the process of metabolism with its two, out, two inputs and three outputs. Remember that one of the outputs of photosynthesis is glucose. The glucose, glucose not needed by a plant is stored as starch, but that same starch is one of the inputs which is used as food for the process of metabolism. Also, the output of photosynthesis, oxygen, is also used as an input to metabolism, as we see here by the purple uh, boxes of oxygen that are illustrated. Finally, the outputs of metabolism, both the CO2 or carbon dioxide and water, those shown in blue here, are inputs to the process of photosynthesis. So as you can see, from this slide, this process of the process of photosynthesis and its outputs are then used as inputs to metabolism. The outputs of metabolism 
are used as inputs into photosynthesis. But there is one key thing here that needs to be added into this, and that is sunlight. We have to add sunlight into the process, but other than that, it can pretty much go in a cycle all by itself. And that is what we saw in experiment 9.3. Experiment 9.3 was an experiment that we started several weeks ago. Here's the picture of the jar. Recall that we, when I brought this in the first time, we put the piece of blue tape at the top of where the plant had grown at that point. I promise you that I haven't done anything with this plant other than put it in my windowsill and let it get some sunlight. Other than that, the processes of photosynthesis and metabolism have been going on and going on and going on. I haven't added any water, I haven't given it any plant food, and this thing has grown. And you can see that growth by how much taller it is over the blue line at this point. That's the end of part two of this lecture. Now it's time for you to take the quiz that I emailed to you. I'd like you to finish that on the computer and send it back to me as soon as possible. Thanks a lot and have a good week.